Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to the video. And today I'm analyzing Elias Deput. And Elias Deput is an upcoming top male model. And I believe he is one of the best looking, if not the best looking and most aesthetic male model. I think he's up there with Sean O'Pride, Jordan Barrett. I think he's better than Chico, myself. And today we're gonna to be looking into why he is so good looking and what makes him good looking. And uh, real quick, before we get into the analysis, if you'd like to purchase your own facial analysis from me, my website's linked in the description. So yeah, feel free to check it out. So firstly, I'm going to cover his jaw, which Elias, unfortunately, doesn't have the best jaw. And pretty much all of his flaws in both the front and side profile are in his jaw. So if you were to put, sort of, he's sort of similar to Sean O'Pry. He just, he's downgrown and he has jaw issues, which if he had a perfect jaw, he would 100% be undeniably the best looking and most aesthetic male model. So yeah, the first thing on his jaw that I'm gonna cover is his jaw frontal angle, which the jaw frontal angle is the inclination of this right here. And I didn't measure that well at all. And his is roughly 80, 77.9, roughly 80 degrees. And that was really bad. And ideally you want this angle to be about 90 degrees. I mean, I think, I think there's some, there's some, of course with every measurement, there's some deviation, like it could be 85 to 95, but the perfect most ideal is 90 degrees and he has 80 degrees. And we will get into in the side profile, what causes this down or this angle. So from the side, he is relatively downgrown. So when your jaw goes down so much from the front, you see this angle is more steep. So if we measure his um, mandibular plane angle, which is the mandible, and if we angle, if we measure how downgrown it is, we can see that it's about 17.9 degrees down which you want it a lot more like this, like more around that 12 to 10 range even. So it's very similar to like Ryan Gosling, who's has a very downgrown jaw. His is nearly like 30, um, his uh, mandibular plane angle. So that's what causes Elias to have this more steep angle, which it's not the biggest flaw in the world, but definitely a flaw. I would say, I would say a moderate flaw. It's not major, but it's moderate, definitely noticeable. And then another flaw in his jaw is the width. And it's a very slight flaw, this is very slight. So his um, bigonial width, which these are the gonians right here, relative to his facial width is about 85%. So this is 85% of this. And in men, you ideally want it upwards of 88 to like 88 to uh, 94. So this is a very slight flaw, but it is a flaw. And we can quickly do a quick morph just to show. I mean, it, you know, it's a, it looks a little weird because I morphed it, but a wider jaw would be more beneficial for sure. It looks better. Next, we're gonna cover his eye area, which, I mean, this is probably the best eye area I've ever seen. And I think it's probably the best in the world, unless there's someone who's not been found yet. And we're gonna look into why. I mean, it's just insane, really. So, the first thing is his eye separation ratio which we take the inner pupillary distance, which is pretty self-explanatory. The distance between the pupils divided by total face width. Now he does have sideburns on one side, 
but you know, it's like it's about there. And it is about 46.7%, which is ideal. And in men, you want it at about 44.8 to 47%. So he's on the higher end. His is the same exact uh, ratio as like Chico's. So good eye spacing. And then next we'll look at the cantle tilt, which in this picture, it's looking down a bit, but this picture is more accurate. And Elias's cantle tilt is about nine degrees, 9.5, 9 to 9.5, which is just this measurement right here. So measure it again on this side. I do take an average of the eyes. So on this side, it's about 9.5 degrees. And the, the absolute perfect in men is about six degrees, but it's one of those things is like more of a good feature. So having nine degrees is still perfect and it looks great. Though it's slightly more feminine, it's not a flaw. Um, now something that you could consider like a flaw if you compared it to the average would be his one eye apart spacing. So his eyes are about 0.88 eye lengths apart, which is somewhat closer than you typically see, but this is due to a good reason. So Elias has very high uh, PFL, which is just the eye fissure length. So when you have higher eye fissure length, no matter what, you're basically gonna have closer set eyes like according to this test. So like someone like Matt Bomer or Jordan Barrett or other people with high uh, PFL, which is a positive trait, have these closer set eyes. So this is not really a flaw at all. Now, once you get below like 0.85, that's when it's normally because they actually have close set eyes, but Elias does not have close set eyes at all. Like as we saw with his um, eye separation ratio. So this is not a flaw. And you can visibly see it looks fine because it's not 0.88 apart for a bad reason. It's a good reason. And the last thing and probably the most insane aspect about his eyes is his eye aspect ratio, which depending on the photo, well, first I'll explain what it is. The eye aspect ratio is the width of the eye relative to the height. And Elias in this photo has a four to one ratio, which is absolutely insane. Someone like Henry Cavill only has 2.8 to one. Someone like Matt Bomer has like three to one but he has a four to one and Sean O'Pry has a 3.6 to one. So this is like the highest I've ever seen and it's absolutely insane. So this is perfect. And in other photos, he's about a 3.8 to one. So regardless, great. And then another measurement is his eyebrow settedness, which, and his eyebrows are base are right here. So his eyebrow steadiness is extremely high. And I'll remeasure it in this photo just to see. So in this photo, this line is 95% of this line. So anywhere upwards of 93% in this ratio is ideal. So very low set eyebrows, very good. So another big factor into what makes Elias Tipput attractive is his overall facial proportions. So we've covered, he does have a few issues in the jaw with the jaw frontal angle and the narrow, slightly narrow jaw, but considering his perfect eye area and his general facial proportions, that's really what makes him so attractive. So we'll go over a few things. So the facial width to height ratio is extremely important and it's something that Elias uh, excels in. So the facial width to height ratio or the uh, FWHR, that was a terrible R, but is the facial width divided by 
the upper lip to the glabella. So the glabella from the side profile, to show you better, is this right here, the brow ridge basically, this. And in the front profile, it's about, in Elias's case, at the middle of the brows. And Elias's facial with tie ratio is 1.99, which is perfect. So it's 1.99 to one. So this divided by this is 1.99 to one. And in men, 1.95 to two is perfect. So Elias, this is just perfect. And then his total facial width eye ratio, which is the total from the bottom of the chin to the hairline, divided by the facial width is 1.33. And this is perfect. And in men, 1.33 to 1.35 is perfect. So someone like Brad Pitt has 1.35, Elias is 1.33. And the importance of this is you don't end up with a face shape that looks too long and tall, like something like this, but you don't end up with a circle face like this. So it's his face is neither too long nor too tall, or too tall nor too wide. Another thing in the jaw that I didn't cover earlier is his chin to filtrum ratio, which this is the chin and this is the filtrum. And Elias's ratio is 2.4 to one. So his chin is 2.4 to one times longer than his filtrum. And in men, 2.3 to 2.55 is ideal. So this is a really good ratio near perfect well it is in the perfect range but it's like near the exact perfect value um i mean there's some other minute things we'll cover one flaw he does have which is very minor is that his lower lip to upper lip ratio is bad at 1.1 to 1 where in reality it should be 1.7 to 2. so his lower lip should be taller and his upper lip should be a bit shorter but since since he still has full lips, it's a very like minor flaw. Uh, a great thing about his nose is that it is a perfect nose. So the the alar base width, which is this, relative to the mouth width, is perfect. So the mouth is one point five three times wider than the nose width, and the ideal range is one point four five to one point five three. So this is perfect. And another check is that his mouth cuts into his irises, which is, that's what you want. And his nose basically barely intersects with the inner canthus. So that's another way to check. So that's perfect. And his mid face ratio, which is the inner pupillary distance divided by this is perfectly one to one so he just has he has so many facial proportions which just check out and with his jaw still being above average especially with the angularity in his jaw the og curve due to his high set cheekbones it just overall it really compensates for the slight flaws that he does have and overall his front profile has a score of 87.8 percent which shout out to creating attractive for the first uh, harmony method. But with my revised system, this is a really great score. This is like equivalent to, I think Brad Pitt's front score. So this is really high. And this is what you would expect to see in a top model. I mean, this is higher than Sean O'Pry, higher than, I mean, really most people in the front profile. So now let's look at his side profile. Now his side profile is a bit worse than his front, but his side is still excellent. But again, the jaw is where the issues come in. So firstly, the most important, arguably, measurement in the side profile is the gonial angle. So this is the gonian right here, which from the front, it's this right here sort of where the jaw meets this part right here from the side is high 
Let's go nile angle is high. At about 124 degrees. And ideally, you want... I'll check what I have in my spreadsheet. Ideally, you want about 115 to about 120. So it's a little bit high. And on top of that, it's very downgrown, as I mentioned earlier. So his jaw isn't the best, but it's still not bad. And so yeah, his gonile angle being too high is a notable issue. His nasofrontal angle is perfect, which is this right here at 119 degrees, which is perfect. Um, his ramus is fairly long, though it could be longer. This is his ramus right here, and then this is his mandible. And his ramus is about 60% of his total mandible length. So this is 60% of this, which is, which is ideal. Though, if his ramus dropped down a bit more, it would create a better gonile angle. So his ramus could still be longer. Uh, what else is interesting for his side profile? We'll look at his lip assessments. So his E plane is perfect. So when you take a point from the tip of the nose to the pogonion, or basically just the chin, you wanna see a smaller distance between the lower lip to this line than the upper lip to this line, which he has. So this is perfect, that's called the E-line. Uh, his other lip assessments are good. The H-line is good, it's from the pogonion to the upper lip, and the lower lip barely doesn't make contact, but that's, that's ideal. Now his issue is with this lip assessment where we take <clears throat> The uh, where we take the birthstone line, so the birthstone line is from the pogonion to the subnasal right up here, and ideally, you want to see a little bit more lower lip projection through this line, but it's still not bad. And his Steiner line is good too which is this right here, and both lips pretty much touch it. I mean, it's so small, so I would count this as ideal for sure. A very important thing to note on his side profile is that he has a positive orbital vector. So the orbital vector is basically the thing underneath your eye, and I'll show on screen what it looks like when someone has a negative orbital vector, or very hollow vector, and Elias has a very positive vector which looks very clean and aesthetic. Um, we'll look at some things like his facial convexity. So facial convexity measures how flat or rounded the side profile is, and there's many different ways to assess it. So we'll take a look at the total facial convexity, which is the glabella to the nose to the pogonion. And his is 140 degrees, which is perfect. Uh, next we'll look at his facial convexity from the nasion. So the nasion is this right here, to the subnasal, to the pogonion, which is 165, which is ideal. And we'll look at the facial convexity from the glabella, I'll have to redo it, which is 170, which is ideal. Um, quite flat, but ideal still, which is good. I mean, you want flat, you don't want a rounded and what else would be pretty important to show? Oh, his cemental cervical angle, which is this angle right here. Is ideal at about 111 degrees, which creates an aesthetic angle when people have Cementals too high looks really bad when people have cementals too low looks really bad. So this is balanced cemental angle 
it's quite important. I mean, if I could, like, if I were to recess his chin. And which would give him a convex profile. It would, it just looks terrible, literally. But then as you bring it out, I mean, now it looks fake, but you get my point. So the convexity is very important. Same with if I recessed the brow, this looks terrible. So it's in, convexity is extremely important as is the chin projection, because as you saw, we measured from this to this, all these assessments would be messed up. Like now that assessment's messed up, that assessment's messed up, that's messed up, that's messed up. So these, these measurements, really you have to hit a lot of them uh, to not completely mess up your attractiveness. So extremely important. And he nails all of them. Uh, what else will we look at? Look at his nasal tip angle, which is the nasal tip. It's right here. It's about 120 degrees. It's kind of hard to see, but it's ideal. Next, we'll look at his recession relative to the Frankfurt plane. So if you notice this line here, this goes from his tracheon in his ear to his um, under infraorbital rim. And this is a benchmark that encephalometry you use to have the same tilt or rotation in a side profile. So we take this and we look at where does the chin line up relative to his profile. So this is the nasion. If your chin doesn't meet this line, then you're clinically recessed. And we will, I'll show you what it looks like to be clinically recessed. I'll try to eyeball it. No more than that. Little more than that even. So this is clinically recessed right here. And as you can see, it looks terrible. So again, another very important measurement. So his chin surpasses this line, so he's not recessed. It also surpasses his brow ridge, which most many top models, it only makes it to about here. And his exceeds this. So he's a very projected chin, which is very important. And, and he clearly passes all the lip assessments. So it's, it's a great place for his chin to be. He could afford to have it less projected, but this is, you want more. I mean, really, his chin could even be slightly more projected. It would still look good. So yeah, no recession at all, which is very important. Other than that, I can't say there's much more, many more interesting things. We can take a look at his brow ridge inclination, which is a very weird shaped, like brow ridge profile. It's very curved, but his brow ridge inclination is about 23 degrees, which is ideal. So now to come up with a total score for Elias T. Poot, both his side front profile and front profile combined have an average of 85% facial harmony, which is very high. Like if you were to grab someone off the side of the street and measure their harmony, this would be many standard deviations above just in the harmony alone. But then if we look at his facial angularity, it's very beyond the top one percentile. I mean, it's insane. So facial angularity, Harmony, I'm giving him an 8.5, which is similar to like Brad Pitt, others in that area. Facial angularity is like a nine. Absolutely insane. His dimorphism is quite high, though it could be higher considering the jaw. So that's like an eight. And then his features, like his eye color, uh, skin, nose shape, things that can't be measured by ratios. He has, I mean, look here, his lashes are absolutely insane. So his features, brow density is good. This is a bad haircut, but normally his hair is good. 
he has a uh, very square chin so his features are absolutely at least like in the eight to nine range so we'll we'll say hmm so this is a subjective thing but you know you have to be just have to use your brain to be realistic I would say his features are an 8.5 so in my system His overall score would be about an 8.8 out of 10, which on paper, this would be higher than Chico in my opinion, who I have at about an 8.5. So yeah, higher than Sean O'Pry as well. So absolutely one of the best looking men, no doubt about it. Just an insane face overall. And uh, yeah, guys, thank you for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed. Leave a comment about who I should analyze next and uh, stay tuned.